Welcome to Creating Connections Podcast, episode 141. I am Mitch Taylor. And I'm Vicki Musney. And today we're going to talk about a personal story and specifically one that I had recently. Yes. Exploring how two different people from different corporate entities approached the sales process when they're selling pretty much the exact same thing. I can't wait to hear this story and discuss it in this episode because the people that are selling to you don't realize that your level of knowledge about sales and your involvement in the sales world. So this is going to be fun to dissect these two different situations. It's going to be great. That was nice and easy. What are you talking about? This <laughs> also speaks to a much bigger issue. Providing personal solutions through understanding people. This is the Creating Connections Podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. 141, I am Mitch. And I'm Vicki. And today. 141, I am Mitch. And I'm Vicki. And today. Welcome back to Creating Connections Podcast, Episode 141. I am Mitch. And I'm Vicki. And today. It's my turn because it's your story. Go ahead. <laughs> Today we get to talk about some real life experiences and what we can learn from those real life experiences and how we can apply that information and that perspective to our own businesses. So today, Mitch, it's your turn to tell a couple of stories. You had two in the last month or so that happened, situations that you were in. Yes. And I know you shared a little bit with me about how they just felt really different. So why don't you... I don't know if you want to pick the first one first or chronologically or how you want to start, but tell us about sure. situation one. <laughs> yeah. So I serve on a few different boards uh, nationally and, or an advisor to board, if you will, and, and that kind of thing. And I had a situation recently where we're looking at hosting a conference at a certain property mm -hmm. and to be able to observe it from the meeting planners side of the situation I think is huge because we don't often sit on their side of the desk. You know, the event planner world is a little bit different yep. than mm -hmm. the event coordinator world, which is different from the food and beverage managers world, which is, you know, there's all kinds of yep. hats that we wear, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when both of these places were looking at inviting and having us bring our conference to them, it was interesting to see the approach from these two different people and how one person, very professional, upfront, in fact, I can say both was, both were, excuse me, uh, both were very professional upfront. They each handed us a packet okay. upfront with information in it. They were very accommodating, one a little more accommodating than the other. So both of them, you went in person to do yes. site visits, correct? Okay. Yes. So these are actual conversations in person, in person not over the phone. Okay. Skin to skin, handshake. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So and packets in hand. Packets in hand, had conversations. It was interesting with one of the first ones to see the back and forth exchange. We took a full tour of the property. And in the second one, we took a full tour of the property. Okay. I'm talking, we're seeing lodging where people are going to have for their rooms. Examples, we're looking at banquet space, meeting space, discussing what could go where. Mm -hmm. One of the approaches though, was more so about the helping side of things. More consultative, if you will. Okay versus hands off. The other one was more, well, I'm just the liaison for this side of the business and you'll have mm. somebody else handle that side of the business. And it's like a ball of clay. You can shape and do whatever you want with it. Hmm. Okay, that's great. Interesting, okay. But as attendees, we want, or as you know, planners ourselves of this conference, we might like to hear 
an idea that you may have to help us solve a problem. When we talk about sales in, in my book, yeah, I'm like, there are no stories. <laughs> approach, <laughs> learn, explain, solve. And mm -hmm. in the explain phase, we talk about finding the right story. Yeah. So in one of the examples. Okay, that's my favorite phase too. I like to, not only do I like to tell stories, I like to hear stories. Yeah. I think in stories. Stories help things make sense to me. So you're saying, did one give you stories and one didn't? Stories help lay everything out. Exactly. Hmm. One was very da 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 by the book. This is what this room will look like. This is what that room will look like. This is the space you have here. This is the capacity of the space. Hmm. And the other one was very much, okay, so we envision that your guests could all be seated, the 400 people we have coming to this conference, could all be seated over here in this area. We have this huge, you know, 10,000 square foot ballroom and we envision, you know, one session, the main session's over here and dining over here. And now we're having conversations. So the first, you know, the one I've just talked about with the, yeah. is painting the picture, right? Yeah. They're painting that, the picture mm -hmm. of having the conference at their venue versus the other approach is just very cut, dry, black, white, you know, hmm. oh, it's like, it's a blank canvas. It's a ball of clay. You can do whatever you want. That's great. And I appreciate that. But, but you've seen events there. Yes. Why not say, well, I've seen some people do this. So if in your case, you might want to put people here and then you could have this event in this room or you could mm -hmm. put tables here. If he's seen that, why? I mean, I guess... Maybe, yeah, maybe ask, in his eyes, it sounds like it's leaving it up to your imagination and giving you, you know, all of all the control. Right. right. But without a little bit of guidance or some vision casting, especially, I think that's a harder sell. <laughs> especially in that mindset. And frankly, in that person's knowledge of the group that he is dealing with, I just said mm -hmm. this is what sexy was. Uh, that's okay. I know you're trying to be respectful, but I think you can say he or she and yeah. it's not a big deal. <laughs> so he was, he was trying to, you know, give us as the planning committee, if you will, mm -hmm. a free reign of space somewhat, not fully, if I could be honest, there were a lot of yeah. restrictions too, Okay. but give us an opportunity to do things how we wanted. But Frankly, it is the, in both situations, ironically enough, it would be the first time in that space for both conferences, if you will. So it's interesting that- oh, You put yourself in a real life sales uh, experiment without even realizing it until twice. after the fact. Twice. <laughs> yeah, because that way you can compare. If you only did it once, you don't think you have as much, but and literally that worked day, out really cool. <laughs> and literally days apart, which was awesome. Again, you're seeing the experience and two different approaches. So Mitch, I just want to ask you, did the personalities of the individual salespeople, did that play into it a lot for you? Or do you think it was more perhaps how they were trained or how things are always done at that property? I think or it's a little you, bit of both. A little bit of both. If I can be honest. In, and again, I'm not the personality expert that you are. I, I, I'm not. But I can't help hear these two contrasting stories and not wonder about personality. Yeah. Because the one sounds like you're describing a blue to me. This is how it is. Here's the details and not a whole lot more. And the other one sounds like maybe she leans or he leans more naturally yellow if they were better at painting that picture. Not to say that only certain personalities can do certain things, but unless you're trained. I would say... You're going to do what's natural. Knowing my, again, knowing the limited knowledge I have of personalities and mm -hmm. working with you and, and everything else, I would say she was a green yellow. Okay. And he was, yeah, blue, but I think a lot of red too. If okay. I can be honest, I mean, mm -hmm. he was very. Well, yeah, that makes perfect Bold, sense because you need details, but front. don't have to waste time with stories. <laughs> we finally got to stories 
towards the end of a, of a lunch, hmm. if you will. Okay. And finally got a little more personal, if you will, at that point in time. Interesting. With her, we didn't really get personal at all. It was pretty much business, which was fine. But she kept it still focused on you and your vision. Yes. And Interesting. Interesting. With, the, with what they were planning for that and how we were going to organize that. And she knew who the key players were. Hmm. He didn't really have an idea. Oh, so he'd also skipped the research phase? <laughs> Which is okay. <laughs> I kind of expect it. Um, a but little. isn't it interesting, though, how you can tell on the other side when someone hasn't done any homework on you? Well, and it's funny, I would argue that he had more of an opportunity to do research than she did. Hmm which is interesting to put that perspective yeah. out there too, but it's the truth. Interesting. So I want to implore you out of this episode to really get focused and really analyze a sales situation that you were in not that long ago. And maybe you're comparing and contrasting, you know, car mm -hmm. sales, for example, you're buying a yep. car or you're buying an appliance or you're buying flooring or you're buying whatever. And look at the two approaches and ask yourself, how did that make me feel? Yeah. Who approached it better for me? Because as Vicky stated before, when you can understand your own personality, you can understand then your strengths and weaknesses and how you communicate with other personalities when you do your search portion mm -hmm. of the sales cycle. Well, honestly, Mitch, just listening to these stories, it just kind of cements in me why I think personality training is so important. It is. Because if you are trying to sell the same way to everyone and you only sell the way that you want to be sold to, which is our natural tendency, if you haven't been trained to think like the other person, yeah. you're going to operate as if everyone thinks like you. Yes. It's just a reminder that people don't. And I guess the takeaway I'm hearing for this is that all of us need to be reminded in our own businesses to treat people as individuals. Or even when you're selling to a group, I think in this case, you were talking about representing a board or another organization. Um, so there are probably more than one person involved. But still, doing that research doesn't need to be done to make things weird. It's to be done in a way that will enable you to serve that future client Right. better yeah and that has big takeaways for what we do whether we're selling to a single person whether we're selling to a couple who's getting married whether we're selling our services to a corporate entity that needs mm -hmm. entertainment facility decor photography etc yeah absolutely mm -hmm. good so takeaways are, yeah those are key facets to think about so that's episode 141 Thank you for watching and listening. However you're consuming our podcast, we greatly thank you. I am Mitch Taylor. And I'm Vicki Misney. And our podcast is dedicated to help you provide personal solutions through understanding people better. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Creating Connections podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. For more information on providing personal solutions through understanding people better, visit creatingconnections.biz.